WMPG, Gorham, Portland. Hi, Golden Age film fanatics, and welcome to DVD Classics Corner on the Air. My name is Dick Dinman, and our goal is to become your exclusive guide to the very best of the Golden Age classics coming out on DVD. We'll have reviews, breaking news of upcoming releases, plenty of surprise guests, and a special feature devoted to the great Golden Age film composers, which we call Cinemusic. So let's turn on the marquee and lights... Camera, action. I'm delighted to report that three-time Best Actress nominee Eleanor Parker returns to my show for the fourth time today to talk about her favorite leading man, Robert Taylor, and the extraordinary chemistry they had in their three co-starring films, the best of which, in my opinion, is above and beyond. The true story of the man chosen to drop the first atomic bomb on Hiroshima and that terrible task's effect on his personal life. In his heart was locked the world's best guarded secret. On his shoulders rested a responsibility greater than any man had ever carried. From here on, he had no wife, no loved ones, no friends, just duty. Above and beyond. Go home, stay home, and keep your nose out of this base. Is it really necessary to play at this big pool? They told me not to bring you out here in the first place. Maybe they were right. The last time will you stay out of my business? It's my business, too. And I'm beginning to understand a few things I couldn't face before. That's enough. Everything they say is true. You're not the man I married, not anymore. You're ambitious, you're cold and unfeeling. Lucy, listen to me. You listen to me. I've had all I can take of this place. I can't live this nightmare any longer. You've killed every ounce of love or affection I ever felt for you, and I want out. Do you hear? I want you to get me out of here. How much? How much is she supposed to take? What do they want from me? Keep your mouth shut. Keep a secret. Lose your friends. Break up your family. What's next? How much can a man take? How much? How much? This unflinching look at one of the most dramatic events in world history is one of six Robert Taylor classics now available exclusively online at the Warner Archive site. And I'll be telling you about the other five later in the show. But let's visit again with Eleanor Parker as she discusses Above and Beyond Robert Taylor and reveals for the very first time the truth about the rumors that she and Taylor were intimate friends. And she'll also tell us the identity of her very least favorite male co-star and the incredible tension between them. I watched Above and Beyond. Oh, did you? Ah. <laughs> that is a, a wonderful, wonderful film. Wasn't Bob good in that? You know, this, this is the thing. That amazes me. He never got a fair shake from the critics because he was so handsome. Yes. They never gave him credit. And if you take a look at his work in Above and Beyond, I can't think of anyone who could have play, played that particular role better than him. I don't I, I agree with you. I, I, yes, he never got any credit for anything. It's true. In Above and Beyond, the chemistry between... this That was your first film together. Uh... Yes, I... No, yeah. wait a minute. Was yeah, it? yeah. Mm -hmm. huh? Above and Beyond <laughs> Above and Beyond was the first. Valley of yeah. the Kings was the second. And the third was Many Rivers to Cross. Oh, that's right. Of the three, the most important film of the three definitely is Above and Beyond. Oh, of course. This film, Above and Beyond, would, wouldn't work unless there was this uh, really unusual and extraordinary chemistry between you and Robert Taylor. You, yes. you worked so beautifully together. The yes, we the did. That's why they had us in three films together. Were you surprised when you were on, on the set of Above and Beyond? Were you surprised at, at how good Robert Taylor was? No, in I wasn't. I really wasn't because, Bob, if you contact with him, with your eyes, with, you know, if you're really working with him, he responds. Uh, when people don't realize he can act, <laughs> yeah. uh, they don't use him from their viewpoint, you know. Yes. But I said, this man, I said, Bob, you just stand there and say the words, come on. 
you can, you can work. You're very good when you want to be. <laughs> because he has the attitude, just take it easy. I'm not going to sweat it out, you know. But I got him to working. I don't mean in that picture. I think he was interested in that picture. But in that one that was bad, I had to motivate him a little bit. So did, <laughs> did he... In, in Above and Beyond, did he work uh, extra hard, do you think, to, to make the yeah. role work? I think he was very interested for some reason, and uh, he was very good, and, and the subject was, was the one that people cared about, and I think he knew it was an important thing to do, and I, I think he personally felt uh, it, it was an important part for him to play, the way he felt about the whole thing, you know? And also, he, he was a pilot. And yes. And, yes. He, and he played a pilot, obviously. Yes, he was wonderful in it. Wonderful. I thought, very, very good. Uh, I, you know, I thought he was just wonderful. I, I literally can't think of anyone who could have played, played uh, that role better. Better. No, I can't either. One of the most powerful scenes in, in Above and Beyond, there's a close-up of Robert Taylor as the Bond as he looks out the window and yes. sits. And that close-up, it, it's one of the, the best moments of silent acting I, I've ever seen. It well, you see, he had a personal feeling for this picture. Yeah. Because of the bomb. Well, of course, many people did. I mean, this in real life had affected him so deeply that yeah. he had something to work with and remember how he felt about it. it, you it know? It's just a great pity that he wasn't wasn't respected more as an actor. Yes, it was, but I think if, it, if the studios hadn't closed, we might have been doing other things together and might have done something really good. It's a strange thing. Whenever an actor or an actress would work together for a long time, and this happened with Jeanette McDonald and Nelson oh, Eddy, Nelson William Eddie, yeah. Powell, Myrna Loy, and yeah. to, a, to a certain extent, you and Robert Taylor, everybody assumed that you were either married or having... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> having a relationship. No. All I know is that when I got back home from from locations on that in the studios, it was no once he called me to ask me to go out, you know. And I said, because it was suddenly three of her, I guess, and he broke up temporarily. Yes. And I said, I'm sorry about it, I can't. I'm engaged to somebody. <laughs> I was engaged to my next husband, Paul Clemens. <laughs> but, um, 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 you know, he wanted to date me. <laughs> And I couldn't go, but I was engaged to it. <laughs> but um, no, we, we were not having an affair. We pause now for station identification. DVD Classics Corner on the Air is proud to be a presentation of Southern Maine's own WMPG-FM, 90.9 and 104.1 on your dial. It's time for Dick's Picks in which I get to shine the spotlight on one of my Dick's Picks of the Week. Now available exclusively online at the Warner Archive are five other terrific Robert Taylor classics, beginning with his rugged interpretation of Billy the Kid in glorious Technicolor. Hickey, your friend, the sheriff, is lying on the jailhouse floor. A hole in his middle, a mile wide. Are you crazy? Completely. Billy the Kid's escaped. Boys, Bond is joining us. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi. He's better known as Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid? He's tough. He don't look so tough. Don't let that fool you. TNT, Taylor and Turner, is how MGM's publicity department sold the incendiary teaming of Robert Taylor and Lana Turner in the Oscar-winning gangster melodrama, Johnny Eager. Isn't that Eager individual the handsomest thing you ever saw? I don't think handsome is just the word. His face is well cut, but... Once for a moment there, it 
it became hard. I think he'd beat a woman if she made him angry. But stop all this Bush League nonsense. You don't want me to take you home and you know it. Of course I don't. Of course I don't want you to take me home. You've made the typical thief's mistake. You've banked too much on an honest man's honesty. Sure, I'd resign my job tomorrow to frame you myself. I'd frame you or kill you. If it would protect my daughter. Hello, Bill. Where are you going? With Eager to see a man. Yeah, I got a little deal to need Julio for. You don't mind, Bill. You drunken chump. Don't you know you won't live five minutes if he gets you in a dark alley? You're not making a friend out of me, Bill. 17-year-old Elizabeth Taylor co-stars with Robert Taylor in her very first adult role as a young bride who discovers that her handsome husband is a communist agent under orders to perform acts of espionage in the tense drama Conspirator. Is this a cry of horror or of guilt? Conspirator, Humphrey Slater's enthralling and dangerous romance stars the two tailors. Robert, long favored by international audiences, is teamed in a British picture with Elizabeth Taylor, a name already electrifying the signs of world cinemas. When we're married, you begin to understand me, what I am and why. Then you believe in me, Linda. You believe in me. Conspirator rips away, sometimes savagely and always grippingly, the secret of a man's past and present. Passionately in love, yet always on guard. Against whom? Against what? Where does he go the nights he walks alone? What is the message on these cards whose summons he dare not ignore? What brings on the spasms of cruelty that ousts all tenderness? All feeling. You're not to touch my things, do you understand? You're hurting me, Michael. Let go. Do you understand? Few readers will be able to put down Conspirator before the last gasp. You must give it up. If you don't, I swear I'll find some way to stop you. So I must choose. My whole life up to now, for you. Few viewers will be able to forget this film once they have seen it. Major Michael Cutter. I'm an associate of Reddick's. I'm an associate of his. Do you understand what I'm saying? Major Michael Cutter. We knew a Major Cutter, but our records show, our records show that Major Michael Cutter is dead. Hello? Hello, did you understand? Our records show that Major Cutter is dead. Yes, I understand. Perfectly. All the brothers were valiant. Teams two of MGM's biggest romantic stars, Robert Taylor and Stuart Granger, for the very first time in an action-packed, color by Technicolor, seafaring epic. Another powerful novel has been brought to the screen by MGM in all its beauty and excitement. Ben Ames Williams' greatest action story. All the brothers were valiant. All the brothers were valiant, taking its place with the greatest screen adventures of all time, glowing with the heroism and self-sacrifice of reckless, hardy, deep-sea mariners and the one woman who dared to go with them, blending every exciting, heartwarming element of entertainment into one magnificent picture achievement. All the brothers were valiant. Talk to her the way I talk to any woman. She's not any woman. No, Joe. She's not. You're right. She's the girl I might have married. The girl you took away from me when I wasn't there to watch over her. She made a free choice. No. She thought I was dead. But I want to refresh your memory about a few things. When we were boys together, I used to take your toys away from you. You never dared do anything about it. Well, I can still take your toys away from you. It doesn't much matter what the toys are. And lastly, Robert Taylor's 
final film under his record-breaking 24-year exclusive contract with MGM, the searing saga of the bawdy, roaring 20s that teams him with the beautiful Sid Charisse. It's called Party Girl. I'm a 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 party girl. I go out with men for money. The money I want. The men you can keep. I made up my mind a long time ago. Never get crowded into a corner. You've never been in that corner with your looks? Just once. In a dark and dirty little barn back home in Oklahoma. I was 15. I'm a lawyer. Mouthpiece for the mob. Guardian angel of punks and gunmen. You like being that? It wasn't forced upon me. I could pick some other branch of the law, but this was the quickest way. I'm a great believer in the quickest way. I run this town from top to bottom. Own everybody in it. And then there's this chick of yours. And that's what I call a real pretty chick. Face of an angel. You know what a... You know what a bottle of acid would do to a face like that? If you touch her... If anyone touches her, I'll kill you, Rico. I'm not a party girl. I've written to Tommy told him if things work out, if he wants me, I'll be waiting. You had no right. Honey, I'm his wife. Honey, you were just married to him. I'm Rico's right-hand man. You know what I mean? But I ain't afraid of Rico. A lot of guys are, but not me. He'd try to kill me, wouldn't he? Not if I'm here. Not if I'm here. These are the characters. This is the town. Gun mad, girl mad, Chicago. And this is the explosive story of hoodlums with nerves like ice. And the party girls who set them on fire. Crackling with the staccato rhythms of machine guns. Taunting with the seductive grace of Sid Charisse. Dazzling with feminine allure and provocative entertainment. The party is over, everyone knows it's through. Party girl, party girl, everyone knows but you. All of these terrific Taylor titles are now available exclusively online at the Warner Archive, even as we speak. Stay tuned for more Dick's Picks. Coming up on DVD Classics Corner on the air very soon. And now it's time to reveal the identity of the only co-star Eleanor Parker <laughs> despised. And the reasons why. Last week, by the way, I, I saw another film of yours. I think it, it may have been your very first MGM film, Scaramouche. Oh, yes, you saw that. It's a good picture. It's a good film. I heard that you did not like Stuart Granger. Stuart Granger. Oh, no, I've told you that myself. Yeah. He was so mean. The whole crew didn't like him. Well, they were dueling down the steps in the wide staircase. They came with red, uh, um, I think it was red carpeting, down a big stairway that curved into the, uh, well, they went all along the railing of the balcony and yeah. everything else. But when they were going down the stairs and it had red carpeting and everything, um, oh, it looked so luscious. And he, he made a mistake. Not not he, who, not, it wasn't, uh, oh, the other one was... Uh, Mel Ferrer. Mel Ferrer was a, a wonderful... Uh, uh, so he knew how to do before we started the picture, and the other one uh, didn't. I mean, uh, he uh, the other one. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even say his name. I just like <laughs> it so much. No, Stuart Granger. Uh, he had to learn see how how to do it, and and so he he is at a disadvantage. Of course, I don't blame him for that. You can't dueling is not the easiest thing in the world. He tried very hard and did very well, but I hated the man, so I didn't care. Okay. But uh, he was so mean, and we on the steps coming down, and uh, Ferrer was going backwards down, of course, because he could do all that. 
and uh, and and he he made a mistake. I mean, uh, Granger did of something and blew it. And he got mad, and he took his uh, foil and just threw it straight at the camera. Can oh. you imagine? Here are the crew, oh. and this the sword, and it was a real one. You know, I mean, I don't know how many often the points and stuff, but it, it was all a real uh, dueling thing. And, and you know, could kill anybody. Yeah. And he just threw it that big thing right at the camera, oh. and the guys all ducked. And oh, they said he better watch it because he's going to get hit with sandbags from above. <laughs> yeah, they said he better watch it. They didn't think he'd live through the picture because the crew up above, those guys had those great big sandbag things. Now what, <laughs> you know, they could just drop it on and kill him. They just loathed him. Was he ever and Every time his wife would come, that was, who wasn't he married to? Um, Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons at that time. She'd come and they'd go into her dressing room on the set and every time that she came, she'd come out of the, uh, the dressing room crying and go home. Mm. And I thought, what the hell is he do? Beat her? <laughs> He's terrible. Why don't you have to cry every time? I wanted to grab her and say, what's he doing to you? I hate him. You know, <laughs> you're crying all the time. Was he ever mean, mean to you personally? No. Oh, yes, yes. Oh. I had to slap him once in a scene. Slap his face. I don't know if you remember when I did it, and that doesn't matter, but he said something. You know, he scared him. I smacked him in the face. And he said, if you ever hit me while we're doing this, if you slap me, all right, I'm going to grab your throat and I'll kill you. I, he said, I, I almost killed a British actress, and he named her name. I can't remember which one it was now. But he said, I grabbed her by the throat and I almost, you know, choked her to death. I said, oh, how nice. How nice. <laughs> and he said, if you dare to slap me and, and hurt me at all, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it to you. I said, oh, how nice. Oh. And he said, no, I mean it. And he was so mean. My, I just, my mouth dropped open. I wanted to hit him right then. So the scene came up, and we're, we're doing my clothes. Uh, I don't know his clothes or whatever. And it had to be good. You had to see him flopped over shoulder shots or something. And it came, and I went, uh, and my hand went up and back. I just couldn't hit him. He's looking at me, and I I couldn't hit him. He, he looked properly because he couldn't glower at me when his face was in the camera, you know. So um, I wasn't. I didn't want to hit him, you know. And the, the director kept saying, cut me. He said, Eleanor, what's the matter with you? You know you're supposed to hit him hard. And I said, yeah, I know. I said, I want to talk to you for a minute. So they said, Everybody, take two or take five. And, and we walked aside and I said, look, he's, he's, he's threatened me. He's going to grab me by the throat and kill me if I, if, I, if I hit him. And slap his face really. I don't know what to do. He said, oh, he's a coward. Never mind him. Hit him as hard as you can. <laughs> Don't worry. All the crew and everybody were right here to grab that man and kill him. If we have to, when we will. <laughs> you just hit him as hard as you can. And I said, well, I know how to do it with the things. If you would only go with me to the cheek, with the, you know, go with the thing. It doesn't hurt him at all. It looks like I kill him. I wouldn't hit him in the wrong spot, you know, and hit his eye or his cheekbone. You, you know, you know, just how to do it. And I said, I know how to do that safely. And I'm not a man. I'm not going to punch him with my fist. <laughs> I'm slapping his face, and I know how to do it, not hurt him. But he's got me scared. And they said, you do it or else. Don't worry about it. Because they're on my back anyway. I, so, uh, uh, that or on the side. I, that might have been a two shot. I can't remember exactly. Oh, but I went up in the next. I wh whacked him. So now you're my leading lady, and I'm your leading man. Shall we... Um Rehearse a little. Hmm? Get out. When you're placid, you are beautiful. But when you are angry, you are superb. If you come one step closer, I'll murder you with this saucepan. I can't imagine a more.
glorious death. I'm warning you, Andre. I know, but if I took any notice, how insulting you would be. Oh. If I hadn't come back, I doubt you'd have lasted the year out. Oh! And, and when I said cut, he looked at me and turned around, and he never spoke to me for the rest of the movie. He didn't do anything, but he never spoke to me. If I walked up and he happened to be in the group, he would uh, turn around and leave, or he would stop talking and just as they'd stand there until I left, you know. <laughs> it was most embarrassing. Mm. And that's all I was doing, was doing what the director told me to do, and I had to do it. It was written in there. It was important at that point anyway, because they were having a fight. <laughs> and, you know, she was feisty, and it was, it was, it was it was good, in there, but he was so awful. Mm. He's the rudest, nastiest guy. I just hated him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everybody did. You know, they all like Jeannie, and she's crying all the time. I said, why don't she stay home? I feel so sorry for her. Got me out with tears streaming down her face. So what What does she do every time to make her cry and have to leave the right? Because the those, uh, dressing rooms are right on the set. I'm going to close my show with a final surprise. As the late Stuart Granger, who, by the way, was my very first star interview, tells his side of the unpleasantness between he and Eleanor Parker. Who's right? Who's wrong? <laughs> I'll let you decide. See you next week. Well, I had the love scenes with Eleanor Parker because she was a... Spitfire is the she word. She was a spitfire, yes. She was... And I wouldn't sort of, I don't know what it was, but she, she had great pleasure when it came to smacking me of really belting me as hard as she could. I mean, she didn't pull her punches. Normally, we actors and actresses, you know, we'd pull our punches, we'd slap it away. One scene in, in the room where I'm sitting on a basket, and I'm joking with her and, and, and uh, being difficult, and she says, oh, you, and she goes, and she knocked me out. She hit me so hard, she you'll you see out. me. No, no, but I mean... For two seconds, I can't think where I am. And that was one danger I had, apart from the fencing. But did you talk to her about that? I mean, No, that's... no, no, because there were problems with Eleanor Parker. She had um, a few... No, she was a darling, but she was... Uh, I suppose I was a bit of a naughty fellow, you know. <laughs> Wouldn't play ball in the way she... I don't, I don't know what it was, but she seemed... You know, a lot of women like to slap men. Oh, well, I would imagine. You know, really hard, especially if they fancy you. And I think maybe she fancied me in those tights. Well, that's my show for today. DVD Classics Corner on the Air is conceived, written, produced, and directed by me, Double D. And if you missed any part of this show, or if you'd like to hear some of my other latest shows, just go to the archive section at www.wmpg.org. And if you'd like to hear some of my older, vintage shows, please go to www.dvdclassicscorner.net, where in addition to the broadcasts, you'll find hundreds of my print reviews of classic DVD releases. So, until next week on WMPG, keep happy, keep healthy, and keep listening. <laughs>